Thank you for downloading this podcast from the outdoorstation.co.uk. Number three, eight, eight. Hello and welcome back to the Outdoor Station with me, your host, Bob Cartwright. Well, it has been a few good weeks and probably even to a couple of months since my last podcast. Uh, and I just felt it was time to uh, apologize to people and regular listeners who have probably been waiting with bated breath for the next one in the Wild Camp series, as well as a few other interviews which I promised everybody, uh, um, well, the last time I recorded. Many people will know it's been a fairly hectic uh, few weeks. We have had our outdoor show at uh, Backpacking Light on the 25th of April, and there's been a whole variety of other things which have been going on around that. So I thought I would take uh, five minutes to do a quick recording just to update everybody where we are, uh, what's going on, and what hopefully you can expect in the near future. So let's start with the Wild Camp podcast series and where we are on that. Well, it, a sequence of events have worked against us one way or the other. Uh, after the last Wild Camp, I came down with a flu bug, which, as all men will know, can be life-threatening. Uh, which obviously put me out of action for a week or so because I just did, really didn't feel like um, hitting any uh, any long distances uh, when you feel rough. And it's obviously, it doesn't make sense to. Uh, the other thing was I was about to go with Ronald Turnbull up on the Lake Districts up to Scarfell Pike and Bivy on top of Scarfell. Uh, unfortunately, it came, as I say, shortly after my uh, illness, not feeling particularly brilliant. Uh, and and uh, equally unfortunately, Ronald suffered a minor injury uh, when he was on a trip and unfortunately had to delay it for a few weeks himself. So between us, we were a right pair of crocs, basically, uh, and we couldn't actually uh, sort a date out. The nearest date to that uh, that still kept within the month was starting to get close to the Backpacking Light Outdoor Show. And as any small business uh, person will know, when you organise something like an open day event or show or whatever, uh, an awful lot of work goes in behind the scenes, and not only preparing the actual location and sorting out marquees and that sort of stuff, but also uh, doing the business end as well, uh, trying to sort out various deals and uh, certain interesting items that people might want to see. So really, that took me, took me from um, uh, March through into April. Uh, the show was on April the 25th, and uh, we approached the show uh, really rushing around like headless chickens, trying to get uh, ourselves sorted and everything a bit more prepared than it was uh, previous years. What did this involve? Well, it's surprising, actually. The people that came to the show will recognise that we've got a couple of units here down in uh, Malvern. The We had to get a load of display material, things that we hadn't normally um, have to consider uh, display racking and and uh, shelving and brackets and cabinets and that sort of stuff. All these sort of things which um, you think you can pick up very easily uh, off eBay uh, until you actually try to do it and suddenly realise they're miles away. So there was a bit of running around um, picking up uh, display items really to make the unit more attractive uh, and to make it easier for people to have a look at the rucksacks and a lot of the cooking gear and so on. Now, uh, on the actual day itself, we had a wonderful day. Um, the weather was really kind to us this year, which was lovely. Uh, a fair amount of sunshine, which was good, and the rain kept off. Uh, we put on the best display we could. Uh, unfortunately, the marquee that we booked uh, due to an overhead power line being a little bit lower than the people realised, that all had to change uh, very last minute into individual uh, gazebos, which actually worked out quite well, I thought, for all the brands who came. So firstly, I'd like to say thanks to the brands who supported us that uh, came to show their wares, and they have had some phenomenal feedback from the people that were here. And secondly, I'd like to say thanks to everybody who came and saw the show. 
um, had a lot of uh, uh, very positive feedback. Uh, as I say, the weather was kind, so people were quite happily sitting back and chilling and enjoying the uh, free teas and coffees and refreshments and contributing to the um, charity uh, that we were supporting on this particular show, which was the British Health Foundation, uh, British, sorry, British Heart Foundation, um, with uh, donating for the cakes that uh, everybody in the family and all our friends had made, uh, as well as the raffle that we put on as well. On top of that, we had, um, as I say, various friends and family people helping us. Uh, we had uh, a Bob... Bob number two, uh, helping out on the uh, wood stoves. He had a uh, stoves burning all day long uh, and ended up cooking sausages, I seem to believe. I don't know who supplied those, but they suddenly came from nowhere. That was great. So uh, all in all, it was a good, fun day. Um, and we had, uh, as I say, a lot of feedback. A lot of people who were podcast listeners came. And thank you very much for, for taking the time to to join us and some of you came some distance as well which was greatly appreciated and had one or two interesting conversations with the partners of uh, some of our our listeners who said i've got the perfect voice for going to bed with which i took as a bit of a compliment um apparently apparently a, a lot of um, a lot of partners a lot of ladies li- listening <laughs> listen to my dulcet tones on ipads as their partners are, are listening to podcasts uh, in the evenings before they go to bed at night so um, i found that quite amusing and uh, really interesting so i'm going to dedicate a podcast to the ladies i think in the future i think that's only fair so i'm going to try and think of some interesting storyline to to put together for that but uh, it was good to talk to people on that score so thanks for that uh, the, the the day went um well the day went really well um it's a shame isn't it the only thing that's always spoiling it is parking Parking tends to be the issue. Um, some people, especially the outdoors people, are quite happy to park down the road and walk along the road for 100 yards to, to visit us, which was great. Unfortunately, there was a couple of people that chose to drive round the back of the units uh, and park on my neighbour's property, which um, sal- soiled the relationship, the excellent relationship that um, I've built up with him over the last couple of years. Uh, especially when he asked them to move and they got into an argument about it, uh, which was um, embarrassing for all of us, really. So uh, everybody else, thank you very much indeed. Um, But if those people are listeners, please do have consideration. That didn't belong to us. uh, And um, we tried to put up as many signs as possible to prevent uh, inconveniences to our neighbours. But um, we've done our best to smooth the troubled waters on on that front it's all about the great outdoors podcasting around the world online on demand and always free i think it's a splendid idea this This is the outdoor outdoor station. station i would just like to say As I say, the um, charity, chosen charity for the day was the British Heart Foundation, and we managed to raise, we collectively, that is, everybody that came and made donations and entered willingly into the charity raffle, managed to raise just over £400 uh, for the British Heart Foundation, which was phenomenal. So thank you, everyone, that's done that. Uh, we're going to round that up a bit more and make a donation shortly. Um, so we will let you know and announce that all on the website when that's happened. Talking about announcing things on the website, we obviously had a photographer down and a video, uh, my video guy, uh, recording the event, and I just haven't had time to look at some of the material. I've glanced at a few pictures, they look great, uh, so we will compile a a video or something to celebrate the actual show and the people that came uh, shortly. But it won't be for a few weeks. Now, the reason for that is that the TGO Challenge starts the day after tomorrow. Now, you might think this is a bit strange, but I forgot. (laughs) I forgot it was on. Not forgot completely, I just forgot when it started. One of of my friends that uh, came to the show, uh, we went for a meal in the evening to say thank you to all our helpers, uh, joined us and he said, of course, we're off on the TGO next week. I said, no, we're not. No, it's a couple of weeks' time yet. He said, no, 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 it's next Friday. And I went, oh, right, okay. 
Now, experienced backpackers will know it is possible to get things together in a very short period of time. Um, but doing something like the TGO, which is a two-week, 200-mile walk, um, it put a little bit of stress on us because my mind, or our minds, had been completely focused on the show. And we kept talking about doing the TGO challenge, and yes, we'll do this, and yes, we'll sort that out, and so and so. But when somebody reminds you it's actually the following week, you suddenly realise that perhaps you haven't quite got your stuff together like you thought you would. Now, initially, there was going to be three of us doing the challenge. Uh, Rose was going to go with a friend, Sue, and I was going on my own. Now, we were starting off in the same place, finishing in the same place, and then sort of weaving in and out as we went along. That was the original plan. Unfortunately, Sue um, had to drop out for uh, medical reasons. She injured herself, unfortunately. So um, the equipment that Rose and Sue were taking and I was taking was all sort of mentally in our minds of how we're going to do things. We've now had to completely change. And that does throw a bit of a spanner in the works in some respects, because as anybody will know who plans a trip, you get sort of into your own little groove about what you're going to do and what you're not going to do and what you're going to take and what you would accept on your own compared to what you would do and accept when you're with a partner. Now, thankfully, the weekend in between my friend reminding me and the start of the TGO was a bank holiday weekend. So we spent the entire bank holiday weekend ripping through everything that we've got. The rucksacks that we were going to take, we've changed. The tents that we're going to take, we've changed. The sleeping system we're going to take, we've changed. So a whole load of variety of of things that we've had to look at again. The base systems, the sort of clothing and, and such like, we were sort of got down to a core... But one thing that's thrown a spanner into the works there has been the fact that the weather forecasts and the weather generally have been talking continually for the last week about, oh, it's snowing in Scotland. That nice spell we've just had is now finished and there's snow, heavily heavy snow, above 600 to 800 metres, depending where you are. Now that does tend to throw the spanner into the works in some respects because all of a sudden you're thinking... Roy, am I going to take some of these um, clip-on um, crampons for approach shoes, or do I go to boots? Do I stay with my uh, Innovate um, approach shoes and take waterproof socks just in case it's walking through slush? Um, all sorts of problems start to rear its head. And I'll hold my hand up in the sense that uh, we just have pulled it together as best we can based on the experience uh, of others and asking for their their thoughts on the weather. Thankfully, I've got family in Scotland and uh, a quick phone call the other day. They sort of said, well, basically, yes, it's going to melt, but it will be still snowy on top, which, of course, means there's going to be a lot more water, which means it's going to be cold river crossings. The river crossings could be much deeper. It's going to be much wetter and muddier on the ground. Uh, So you have to take this into account. So even though you're not walking through snow you might be walking through mud. As part of the preparation, of course, for the TGO, uh, we have a food dehydrator, and we've been dehydrating food left, right and centre. Well, to be fair, Rose has. We've mentioned many times that we've written a cookbook, and the cookbook has gone through various stages in its life. Uh, It came back recently from the copywriters to make sure it was correct, and Rose has actually cooked a lot of the meals from that cookbook and dehydrated them over the last two weeks when we suddenly realised the date was looming. Uh, The house has been filled with all sorts of exotic smells, uh, drying mango mixed with um, (laughs) curry and fish pie mixed with um, rhubarb and custard. Uh, It's quite a waft sometimes when you go out the back kitchen and go, what the heck is that? So we're looking forward to enjoying those meals as we go along and perhaps we will talk a little bit more about what it's like to uh, cook, dry and then rehydrate dehydrated food and what it actually tastes like on the hill. Today is uh, Wednesday the 6th of May. We travel up tomorrow, planes, trains and automobiles. We start flying at 7 o'clock tomorrow morning from Birmingham and we eventually get to Shieldbridge at 8 o'clock tomorrow night. It's quicker to go to Singapore. It's ridiculous. But anyway, that's planes, trains and automobiles for you when it comes to the UK. To 
to subscribe to our show, please follow the instructions on our website or search for us in the iTunes directory. Our route this year is as we uh, anticipated, and obviously we've um, sent the route in for the assessors. Uh, so we're starting at Glenelg, uh, which is near Shield Bridge, uh, going via Lagan, then over to the Burma Road and into, into Aviemore. Initially, we were thinking of coming out of Aviemore, doing, uh, going up the Larigaroo and then going over top of Ben McDewey. But the weather is the big question mark there because that obviously is a fairly high peak. Uh, so we're expecting to go round it uh, and come down to the back road into Ballater and then over Mount Keen. Mount Keen was a real surprise last time I did it. And I was really, um, really enjoyed the walk uh, from Ballata over Mount Keen down to Tarfside. Uh, so I'm looking forward to actually doing that again this year. And then from Tarfside, it'll be the usual meandering uh, around the fields and the roads as you start to rejoin the urban edges of uh, St Cyrus and then down to the beach at St Cyrus. And that'll be it. 200 miles, 14 days. Well, let's see how we get on. It was 2011 when I made the last TGO Challenge podcast series And I spoke to Andy recently, and so he's taking his recorder, he's doing a completely different route to us, and we hope to have a chat with people as we go, fellow challengers, seeing how they're getting on and their thoughts, perhaps people we meet en route, people that live in the Highlands, in Scotland, and tell us what it's like to actually live in uh, in such a glorious place through all weathers that uh, they have to live through, I guess. And uh, anything else of interest? Probably recording our highs and lows, uh, some of our experiences during the day, as well actually recording, as I say, things like the uh, river crossings and uh, other aspects of crossing snow uh, that we may have to face uh, as we go across. I'll also be trying to do um, a bit of a video as well, like I did uh, last time uh, when I went with Lee and Tony in 2013. Uh, it won't be a, a detailed video, but it'll certainly hopefully give people a flavour of what's involved and uh, that will hopefully uh, guide people towards the the audio series as well if they want to know more information and more detail about what actually happened. So that really concludes what I wanted to say uh, in this particular podcast. First of all, I wanted to apologise to people that were listening uh, avidly for the Wild Camp series. I suppose uh, doing the TGO challenge is going to be two weeks worth of wild camping, so that that sort of offsets the fact that I've missed a month. Um, I'm hoping to get back to do the trip with Ronald um, when I get back in the summer. Um, I've got another trip lined up in Dartmoor uh, again as soon as I get back, Uh, so that should be uh, something to look forward to. And I also have a variety of people I'm going to interview and get out on the podcast. But as you can probably tell from some of the preamble earlier on, it's been very, very busy. uh, And I do apologise, just not getting enough time to actually put these uh, pieces together uh, to uh, keep people entertained and informed. But hopefully this little one will keep me going for a while. Uh, Safe to say that I will be busy over the next couple of weeks. Uh, We set off on Friday the 7th of May and uh, we finish two weeks later. So, all being well, we'll have a safe crossing. Um, The weather will be as kind as it can be. It'd be nice not to have 10 days solid rain like we did last time uh, when Rose and I went. Uh, It would be nice to have some sunny spells, which uh, would lift the spirits no end. So, that is about it on this one. Thanks very much for listening. Uh, We will be back very soon. And until then, bye for now. Thank you for listening to this podcast. To hear more from our extensive free library, please visit the website at theoutdoorstation.co.uk. The home of UK-based audio and video podcasts for outdoors people everywhere.